For usual reasons, channels for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. New content schedule alert. I'm gonna be releasing a video nearly every day. We're gonna do setup Sundays, macro Mondays, teaching Tuesdays, what could go wrong Wednesdays, that's mainly altcoin focused. Thursday and Fridays, more podcasting type stuff, but look out for that. You may notice it, it's Monday where you are. This is setup Sunday. What am I doing? I'm a day late already. Look, I was watching Avatar 2. It's a long movie, okay? So set up Sunday, <laughs> first day, what are we talking about? I'm only going to go through the specific charts I'm looking at each week. They may not change much from week to week, but a lot of people are asking for, for more content, more stuff, more things. So that's what we're doing. One of the biggest changes over the past two weeks has obviously been the BlackRock ETF applications and James Butterfull at CoinShares puts out this great flows report weekly on ETFs, ETPs, everything in between, ETNs, whatever it is, uh, globally. And uh, obviously, we've had a, a dramatic shift in flows, sentiment, expectations. You could argue regulations go along with that. I wanted to hit on this today just because it's super important, obviously. And that Bitcoin was the primary beneficiary, did not trickle down to altcoins, and he breaks it down as far as the components here. You know, mostly pro shares, uh, US ETF. I looked into this ETC issuance. It's not the coin. I still can't exactly figure out, but they have several products. In any event, by asset, most of it weekly was uh, in Bitcoin. And you also have to be careful on reading this because sometimes the short Bitcoin is essentially inverse of what you'd expect, right? Flows into the short product don't necessarily mean bullish sentiment, you know, depending on how you want to think about that. Maybe it's a hedge, maybe it's XYZ, whatever, but just wanted to point that out because sometimes this number will, you know, counter the flows in the other direction. Anyway, just keep that in mind. But overall, super bullish and, you know, there's been discussion as far as will BlackRock be first? Can they be first? I think here, I suspect high speculation. The SEC will find a way to approve BlackRock's application first. Now, we may see that ARK and 21 shares have an app that they filed a while back that is maybe technically first based on the date. And uh, James in the article here gives the date 813 is the next decision. But I fully expect uh, the BlackRock application to be first. I could be wrong. I think it's stupid that they're even approved based on date. Just approve them all on the same day and be done with it, you know. Anyway. All right, on to some charts. So with that... ETF lens, inflows lens, Bitcoin lens. That sort of informs, you know, what I'm watching for the week, what most people have been watching. It's not a surprise. Uh, and one way to break this down, you know, further into pieces would be to look at things like Bitcoin dominance, Bitcoin versus the world. I'm sure you've heard and seen all the articles about Bitcoin's market cap growing against the rest of the market. And yes, you can put TA on this. You do have to be careful. You have to sort of understand what the components are. You could make your own. You could make Bitcoin against ETH plus other layer ones, Bitcoin against stable coins, whatever you want to do, right? I believe stable coins are included here on the trading view data. In any event, still looks bullish above 50%. As you'd sort of expect, again, the flows aren't going to other products. They aren't going to non-Bitcoin ETFs, ETPs, ETNs. That's where all the attention is right now. From a technical perspective, I like continuation here still eventually you know nothing happens in a straight line obviously the moral of this video but this still looks very strong to me coming off of a multi-year consolidation period we don't have scammers in the marketplace dumping junk on the market inflating altcoins you know there's no project there's maybe a few meme coins but in any event this should still keep going and as far as a rotation play the setup would be for me you know, I'm looking to rotate potentially into other stuff. Once this plays out from a technical perspective between 54 or 58, something like that, you could argue for 61, 62 as well, based on where this drop happened. But again, this just sort of helps me form my lens of, as far as what I'm looking at, what I'm focused on here. Uh, for Bitcoin, obviously, we've pulled back a little bit today, nearing 30. All in all, I think as long as we're above 25 at this point, looks totally fine. I don't have a 200-day moving average on here, but I'm sure it's somewhere around 25 by now. Previously, we had this chart pattern, inverted head and shoulders, that we've hit twice now, just barely wicked into the target range based on fibs. And the fib extension for this falling wedge would be 
35, 37, there's a pivot at 38, there's a pivot at 26 and a half, 27, whatever it is. I think the interesting note here is we haven't really, you know, this is going to be controversial. We haven't really trended since we got off this bear trend train, right? Yes, we've gone up. Yes, I understand that. But it's really been, you know, max buying flat, max buying flat, max buying. We may be entering a flatter consolidation period. The general trend has been up, but we really haven't, you know, we've done a lot of chop basically. So we may be in for one of these consolidation periods. But typically what happens is uh, you get your three drives. We're in our third drive. You watch for divs. We don't quite have a bear div just yet, as far as I could tell. Typically these consolidations get shorter. I don't believe this previous consolidation was shorter than the one before it. So yes, we are bullishly trending, but realistically, you know, we've, we've either chopped or went straight up. There really hasn't been an in-between. So I still like higher. I'm still bullish. Things still look fine. And I still like uh, mid to high 30s you know, in July or by the end of this week. The problem with this week is that it's a quarterly roll and you get a lot of just rebalancing in general. You get a lot of people making decisions for indices this week. A lot of people may be waiting to put on size on, for positions because they want to roll into a longer contract. You know, there's all sorts of things that happen. So this may be just a week of ugly, ugly chop until Q3 rolls around. We're also still in this Pitchfork, arguably, it's not pretty, okay? So don't get angry at me. I know this isn't pretty. You know, we came out of it here. But if we are in the pitchfork, let's say we are, you know, again, you have rationale for returning to that midline somewhere in the mid-30s, let's say. Wouldn't bet the farm on that, but uh, based on that analysis. But it looks okay, right? As for the cloud, we are above the cloud. TK Cross on the daily is, you know, flat. It's overlapping on itself here. I'm just, again, highlighting that. Inverted head and shoulders, but from a, from a trend perspective, again, the daily cloud isn't going to be the best metric for this because we moved straight up, right? So at this point, the cloud likes support at uh, 28k on the daily. We did stay green on the cloud the whole time. We did technically get a cross recross with price above cloud. So yes, this is satisfactory for a bullish entry, or at least was. Obviously, if you weren't watching the falling wedge and just the cloud. So I do like eventual continuation, but uh, I think chop is, is likely in the near term. Now, as far as like a six month setup or like a quarterly setup, I'm going to watch this like a hawk every week until we actually move through this. But as crazy as this year has been, all we've done so far is basically, you know, retrace to June 2022. You know, we're not even through the weekly cloud, which is the ultimate trend determiner. You know, this was post having in 2020, stimmies, COVID, whatever. I get it, right? There's always a reason 2017 was the same. They said it'll never happen again. <laughs> Guess what? Uh, this time they're going to say it'll never happen again. And, you know, eventually we're going to have to bring rates back down in the United States. Maybe that's around the next halving. I don't know, but we're doing pretty well here for rates being the highest they've ever been in Bitcoin's existence. I'll save the macro stuff for another video, but it's definitely interesting we've we've done this well, you know, so far with rates as high as they are. So as far as the setup is concerned, you know, you're waiting for your cloud entry in the weekly. And my prediction is either this is going to reconsolidate in the in the 30 range. This is like, you know, multi-week setup here, but reconsolidate in the 30 range based on previous support turning into resistance or just ultimate chop, you know, within the cloud. But probably more importantly here is we have a bullish TK cross with price below cloud on the weekly, which is indicative of a short entry close based on the cloud. Obviously, this is turbo late if you're just trading cross to cross, and that's why you're not just watching the cloud uh, on the weekly, right? If you're trading this, you're watching chart patterns, you're watching all sorts of stuff outside of this. But it's important from a trend perspective because... This bearish cross with price above cloud said, okay, it's time to get out of the pool. We've been in here a little bit too long. Things are getting pruny and brown, whatever it is. Double top, right? We broke down through the cloud. And this is a resetting of that bearish momentum completely based on the cloud. So I'm bullish here, continue to be bullish, unsurprisingly. Uh, but one other thing to watch for is a bearish TK cross with price below cloud. So let's say, you know, we... Get denied at the cloud here. We continue to drift lower. 
eventually make a lower low below 25, and then you get your bearish TK cross. That would be a, an excellent short re-entry signal, but that, that's weeks out if it does happen at all. For me, the expectation here is definitely an attempt to 42. Now, it may grind below 30, right, for a year. I don't know, but eventually I do like 42, and that's why it's important to pay attention to this on the weekly. Some other setups. So for ETH, ETH has just been, uh, you know, everybody loves to talk about the, the deflation, disinflation, whatever it is. I don't care anymore. Call it whatever you want. All this uh, staked ETH, blah, 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 blah. To me, the most important thing is this chart here. This is a three day, okay? It just goes to show you how little ETH has done. These vertical lines are kind of the events, right? The staking, the merge, blah, 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 blah. None of it matters. Sorry, just doesn't. Uh, to me, the only thing that matters here is the chart pattern, the say sending triangle. Maybe it's an Adam and Eve. Maybe it's like 2019 BTC where we just ground that sucker out until we finally went up. And you could argue, and I'd believe you, that hey, all this staking and ETH getting taken out of supply is why this chart looks like it does. I'd say sure, but you know, at the end, I don't care, right? I'm just looking at the chart. So on the cloud, it's still below the cloud, in the cloud, whatever you want to think of that as. But ultimately, the horizontal line tool is your best friend on this trade. Uh, I opened some ETH at 1906 uh, over the past couple of days, and the stop loss for me on that would be anything below uh, the most recent local low, which is how you'd identify that. You know, you don't want to be below this horizontal. Sorry, diagonal. You want to be above this horizontal. You want to be above <laughs> this diagonal. And another thing with any chart pattern, you always want to see declining volume, which not perfect. Event-driven volume certainly disrupted that, but it's good enough for me. And another thing you want to always note is any pattern that waits to fill in its entirety typically has a harder time actually breaking out. And depending on how you draw that, it's going to look a little different. Okay, so I drew it like this. You may want to move up these vertical lines, whatever you want to do. Uh, sorry, horizontal lines. Point is, we will probably break out slightly before this pattern completes or it will fail. For me, those are the two options. This leans bullish heavily, but ETH does not matter effectively until it's above 2k which shocker that's where this pivot is so i like a pivot to pivot trade i like 2500 plus potentially 3k depending on how you want to measure this it's just going to take some time i'm probably going to be looking at the same chart next week maybe the week after right this is a three-day chart it's super slow but it looks good eventually to move up in no way shape or form am i bearish on this probably the only event that can disrupt this would be Regulatory clarity on ETH being a security in the U.S. You know, that I think would be the slam dunk on shutting this door closed. But right now there's some, you know, rumblings of potential ETH ETFs, which are, are probably ways out. That also helps charts like this because people are thinking, where the, where's the money going to come from, from? Where are the flows going to come from? Are institutions going to be looking to ETH next after Bitcoin, right? Things like that. Uh, ETH cloud on the daily isn't really going to help you, again, because it's been flat. It's been noisy. It's been choppy. Cloud is ultimately a trend indicator. And if we're not trending, don't be forced to use it, right? <laughs> so again, the horizontal line tool is your best friend. Hell, just use the, the yearly pivot, right? Don't even draw anything. I'm extremely lazy, so just leave it like that. And if we're above the daily cloud, that's maybe enough to give an early, early entry signal. But again, I'd, I'd wait for, for 2K. A few quick other things to watch. A lot of people have been talking about GBTC relative to the ETF filings, relative to the spot filing specifically. And if you're unaware, there's been a large discount on GBTC, 50, nearing 60% beginning of the year. That's closed now at a 30%. One thing to watch here from a technical perspective would be a move into the low 20s. Doesn't look great here right now, but you know this stuff is fairly illiquid. Doesn't trade on the weekends, you got to keep that in mind. But the chart pattern was perfection from a falling wedge perspective. Again, this this three quarter idea, right? You want this, you want your triangles typically break out when three quarters full. Uh, inverted head and shoulders, uh, other patterns, you know, typically complete. But triangles specifically, those typically break early because probably everyone's watching them and has an expectation, right? Anyway, so I do like higher highs still on GBTC up here. And, you know, why Why do we even care, right? It's not real Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. We can go down the list. The point is, who is excited about Bitcoin products, institutions, who has access readily available to stuff like this? 
institutions. They're not going to go to Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, right? They don't want to deal with it bad. They don't want to deal with custody. They just want to have exposure to the action. And this is where the action is, definitely. Along the lines of ETH, I'd watch ETH as well. Again, volume declining. You could argue maybe some sort of inverted head and shoulders. This is the two day now. And I'm bouncing around. This is the two day with default doubled settings versus my settings, right? So I'm all over the place with, with the settings. But if it's a traditional market, I use traditional market settings. If it's 24 seven cloud, I use uh, 24 seven settings. Anyway, ETH, I also like higher highs. I like how this looks. It's a mess, admittedly. But maybe the more important thing here are the discounts. You know, if this if these discounts grow, that could signal that you're seeing institutional players sort of be done with the trade, right? ETH is still close to 47%. They have it spelled wrong here. This is uh, off of CoinGlass. I'll put the link in the description of the video below. But this is still a pretty wide discount, and this is extremely wide. Now, ETH, much less likely to get an ETF anytime super soon, but it's still there. They also don't stake that ETH, so you're getting hit on fees, you're getting diluted, it's a mess of a product. But that's another potential, you know, news event where they're like, uh, they being Grayscale saying, oh, we're going to change the prospectus or something to get this stakeable, I don't know, right? Who knows if that's even possible, but there were rumblings of that as well. And on CoinGlass, they have the premium that you can watch uh, over time. This is for ETH. It's at 46% here, and uh, GBTC, you can see how that spiked after that BlackRock application in the uh, low 30s here now. Then lastly, just ETH BTC. Do I really think this is going to go to O2? I don't. But along the lines of the Bitcoin dominance conversation, where do I want my positioning skewed based on dominance, based on ETH BTC? I think that plays a role. It's a data point, right? If you're just like, you know what, I'm denominating ETH, Bitcoin's dumb, whatever, right? You do you. But for me, I'm looking at all the data points and this continued to look uh, weak, undeniably. But one thing I do like is watching the spot pair for that chart pattern and using EPTC and using dominance to gauge size and allocation between uh, BTC and ETH for me personally. So that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.